All right, today's little project is something that I just can't stand, false advertising, pork pies. Now, this is a Ryobi leaf blower. It is a, read that upside down, RBV26G, um, made in 2012, so 11 years old. I found this on the side of the road, absolutely gummed up and flogged, well, I don't know if it was flogged, but gummed up and just wouldn't start. So, gave it a birthday, got it going, basically operates like new, I've cleaned it out completely, but I just thought, 320 kilometres an hour max. I thought, are you serious? That's 89 metres a second. Does this thing really do 89 metres a second? So I thought, well, I'd better find out. So, that's what I'm going to do. Take my headphones off. So the first thing, if you're going to do a test like this, is to make sure that this thing is absolutely running as well as it can be. So I'll show you how I did that. So I basically moved the choke out of the way. Now to get this thing going, I gave the um, carburetor a bath in an ultrasonic cleaner. I'll show you a photo because it was absolutely so gummed up. I took these um, bleed carburetor bleed screws out. I didn't adjust the fine idle, I only adjusted the, the, the high mixture setting and I'll show you what that means in a second. And basically you can, when you do that, you can adjust how much flow and how much power you get out of this little 26cc blower. So I'm just going to start it again and I'll, I'm going to adjust this high mixture screw and I'll show you what I mean by being able to adjust it. So that is about as good as that will ever get. So you could hear, hear the, the change in tone um, as it's trying to uh, adjust the mixture. Now, keep in mind that this carburetor has been completely cleaned out. It's been ultrasonically cleaned. It's been blown out with compressed air. Uh, the spark's been checked. It's at 08 mil, uh, And I'm going to see if you can, in fact, get 320 k's an hour out of it. So how do you measure airspeed? You can either use a, a little wind vane anemometer but they're usually limited to maybe 40 30 meters a second something like that around about 100 120 130 k's an hour or you can use what they have on the side of aircraft which are called pitot tubes one of the good things that the french have given us so pitot tubes measure air velocity by measuring differential pressure difference between uh, total and static pressure so uh, i'll show you how they all work i'm going to use the existing tube and i'm going to see if a stock tube like this will enable 320 k's an hour because what you have to have when you're measuring wind velocity is you've got to have what they call stable laminar airflow so what that means is you don't want turbulence and an abrupt discharge like this gives you heaps of turbulence as well as inlet conditions like this heaps of turbulence so i'm going to play with a couple of configurations i'll see what you get out of this stock and then i'll have a bit of a play all right so we've got some tools of the trade here we've got two wind vane anemometers this little fella here you can measure that in knots miles per hour or meters per second i'm interested in meters per second meters per second i've also got this this is a uh, it's called it's a testo which is a uh, instrument company and this measures differential pressure so what that means is the two ends of these pipes here will measure a difference in relative air pressure. The other thing that I need to know is the temperature. So 33.7, 33.8 degrees. Uh, and the reason that that's important is because the density of air uh, controls the parameter called the velocity pressure, which is half rho v squared, where rho is air density, and air density varies with 
temperature. So at zero degrees, it's 1.293 kilograms per meter cubed, and at 20 degrees, it's about 1.2. So the warmer the air, the lighter the air. That's why warm air rises. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this bad boy up. I'll put the vein anemometer on the discharge of the longer pipe to represent factory conditions, and I'll see what my vein anemometers give me. Now the last little tool that I've got here in my little arsenal, I've got a couple of these. This is a pitot tube. So basically you've got total pressure on this port and static pressure on this port. And this is actually, this is made by Dwyer, and this is actually the smallest commercial pitot tube that you can buy. So these tiny little pinprick holes around the side here, they measure static pressure, which is the pressure that tends to burst or collapse a vessel. And this one at the end measures total pressure in any units you like. This measures in hectopascals or 100 pascals. You can measure it in PSI, you can measure it whatever you like. But I hook that up to my differential pressure meter and essentially this will measure up to, well, almost any velocity, which is how planes can measure uh, airspeed up to well over a thousand kilometers an hour. Now, the other instrument that I've got here is a, it's called a hot wire anemometer. So what happens is uh, the device passes a small electric current through this little bead at the tip here and the difference in resistance as it cools down uh, the current increases to try and maintain the same temperature and the measured current gives you a, uh, a, a temperature basically, uh, sorry, it gives you a temperature and it also gives you an air velocity based on the, on the difference in resistance and the difference in absorbed current. But I know that this thing has a flat line around about uh, probably 30, 40 metres a second so I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, so this is just at idle. I'm going to try the pitot tube and see what a real result gets me using some proper instrumentation. Alright, let's go and see what those numbers mean. Alright, so that test was pretty abysmal. So, what I've done is I've just jury rigged up my pitot tube so that it's in the center line of the duct because that is where the velocity is going to be highest. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off the cover, which probably obscures, oh, give or take, 15% of the inlet. You can see the veins there. And the pillar's actually in pretty good condition, so I don't think that is going to be chipped or affecting airflow at all. The other thing I've done is I've also cleaned out the inside of, of this. So a little bit better with a, an unblocked inlet and now we're going to try uh, some other discharge and inlet options. But I don't think we're even close. Right, so the next test is going to be straight out of the discharge with the inlet unblocked. So we're going for broke now. All right, so that was not a centerline velocity measurement. It was just off to one side, but still 17 hectopascals. Now, no test would be complete without checking for sound pressure, so I'm going to do a sound pressure level test only because it says 83.3 dB LPA, that's A weighted, and the LWA is sound power. Now, this is at idle, which is just rubbish. When would you ever use one of these things at idle? Never. And I'm also going to test it against its friend, another Ryobi, but this one is a RBV22V. It's a 
kilowatt electric sucker blower uh, that I've had for a couple of years, a speed control, so I'll try this one at idle and also at flat out and see what sound pressure levels they both generate at one metre, which is the Australian standard for noise measurement. Okay, so that's at one metre. 83, just as they advertise. Blah, blah, blah. So that's marginally quieter, that's the electric one, at one metre, at the lowest speed. The last step in basically working out what the problems are with getting this thing up to the absolutely, lutely ambitious 320 k's an hour is I'm going to measure the static pressure. So the static pressure is the pressure that tends to burst or collapse a vessel or a duct. These tiny little holes that you can see are here, they measure static pressure, which I did mention before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little bit of an extension piece uh, in the duct, um, just so that I can join this, have the pitot tube in the middle, basically like that. It doesn't matter where this is in the duct, because static pressure is always the same in a duct. Velocity pressure changes as you cross the path of the duct because you get this sink order velocity profile less towards the edges more in the center so but static pressure is easy to measure and that'll be next on the cab so this is my setup so I've got my little extension tube there I'm gonna insert my pedo into a tiny little hole like so just made that with a nail now it has to point or it should point it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna make it point towards the direction of flow like that and I'll get this thing fired up and we'll make some noise okay that 3.5 is the maximum I'll use that all right, so this is a summary of all of the tests that were done on this little Royabi blower, RBV26G. So we've got a bit of data here that I've collected. So basically, as it comes out of the factory, the most I could get out of this thing after a claimed 320 k's an hour, the most I could get out of it was about 47% of the claim, so 150 k's an hour. Now, when I opened up the inlet, I got about 155 k's an hour, still not even close. And when I opened up the inlet and opened up the discharge duct, so absolutely no resistance at all, the most I could get out of this thing was 200 kilometers an hour. So only 63% of the claimed, and that's with everything open where you can get your fingers jammed in a uh, basically a spinning turbine at whatever, seven, eight, 9,000 RPM, just crazy. So this is the rub. Claims it'll do 200, uh, 320 kilometers an hour, the reality is the best I got was 200 kilometers an hour. So now that we've measured this thing and we know how much flow and velocity it produces, so it produces 186 liters per second or 11,160 liters per minute at 350 pascals. So these are the measured figures. So 0.186 meters cubed per second out of that 65 millimeter diameter discharge duct gives us 200 kilometers an hour. But what we're chasing is the claimed 320 kilometers an hour. So if you put this into a theoretical fan power calculation, assuming 50% mechanical efficiency, which is about right for a flat blade impeller, you get 0.13 kilowatts or basically 0.2 horsepower. So you've got a couple of options. You can speed up the motor and basically you need, let's assume that flat out this thing's running at 6,000 RPM, which is probably right. I don't have a taco, but that's probably right. You need to increase motor speed by 58% from 6,000 to 9,500 to go from 0.186, which is 200 kilometers an hour, to 0.3 meters cubed a second, which is 320 kilometers an hour. So to do that, to increase from 6,000 to 9,500, because pressure drop increases with the square of velocity, as you increase flow and velocity, you increase pressure. That requires an increase in power. Again, 58% increase in power from the 0.13 kilowatts that we calculated up to 0.5 kilowatts, which is, again, significant. So the other thing is we know that we measured 0.35, 350 pascals. To get from 6,000 to 9,500, because of that inverse squared proportionality, you go from 0.35 kPa to 0.88 or 0.9 kPa. So these are all 58% increases, so a massive increase. So 
for Ryobi to claim that this thing does 320 kilometers an hour is nothing short of absolute bollocks. Look, I also, it's a nine bladed uh, impeller. I also calculated the blade pass frequency. I did that at, all, at, at idle, which I assume is 1500 RPM, and at maximum RPM, which I assumed is 6000. So 225 up to 900 hertz. If I had a narrow band or a fast Fourier transform uh, measuring device, I could confirm because you'll get that spike. Anyway, this myth is totally busted. There's no way Ryobi should start putting the actual maximum velocity on there, not some bogus figure that you think people can't measure. Now, there's just one last thing that I checked, and that is, does this machine comply with the Australian standards for safety of machinery? Now, the relevant standard is AS4024, uh, which is the machine regarding standard, and it gives clear guidance on safety distances to stop your fingertips being chopped off by rotating machinery. So table A4, which is, here's a copy here, tells us that to protect against finger ingress, the opening can't be more than 8 mil wide for finger insertion up to 20 millimetres. So that's these figures down here, finger up to knuckle joint here. So up to 20 mil, you've got 6 to 8 mil opening. So we actually have a measured opening of 5 millimetres for an insertion depth of 45 millimetres. So 45 is greater than 20 and 5 millimetres is less than between 6 and 8. So basically, yes, this complies with AS4024. Well done, Ryobi. You got one thing right. Thanks for watching.